Hey, my friends, Derek from Bomb Socks here with more Bomb Bites, where we are feasting upon the words of Christ. We're doing it one bite at a time. So at this phase in the Book of Mormon, in the Book of Mormon, we're officially introduced to Moroni, his son, which I love the way Moroni got his name. At least this is the way I really look at it. Mormon wrote back in Alma, if all men had been, were, and ever would be like unto Moroni, speaking of Captain Moroni, the very foundations of hell would be shaken forever. The devil would never have power over the hearts of the children of men. And so when you've got a guy who shakes hell and scares Satan, what do you do? You name your kid after him, right? And that's the way I've always looked at that is here's Mormon who I can just see him. It's like, I'm going to name my son Moroni. And so You've got Moroni here, who is a faithful, faithful man, who watched the near destruction of his entire people. And the Lord gives him a little peek into what is going on in our lives. In fact, let me take you right to the Come Follow Me manual and just show you a little exercise here that I think is a great one to do as an individual or as a family. So here it is. It says, uh, the Book of Mormon was written for our day. This is a key element to understand. Jesus Christ showed Moroni what would be happening when the Book of Mormon came uh, forth. And what Moroni saw led him to give bold warnings for our day. And so then it says, as you read Mormon 8, 26 through 41, and then you go to chapter 9, verses 1 through 30, ponder whether there are any signs of those attitudes and actions in your life. What could you do differently? And then it gives you an example. For example, in chapter 9, it contains Moroni's message in response to the widespread lack of belief in Jesus Christ he foresaw in our day. Consider recording, or you can talk about it however you want to do it, what you learn uh, about his words from the following. One, the consequences of not believing in Christ. Two, the importance of believing in a God of revelation and miracles. And then three, Moroni is just general counsel for us. What do you learn from Moroni? that can help you bring others closer to Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. And as I as I looked over those verses, I was amazed. And I get it. It's, it's amazing me every single time. I know that's the way the Book of Mormon is. The number of times you read it, it does not matter. You're still going to see things come up every time. And maybe it's because we're just living in a very volatile time right now. And here is Moroni seeing me seeing him, seeing me in these chapters. So what I'd like you guys to do is this. Um, you can divide it up amongst your family. One of you can take chapter eight, one of you can take chapter nine, however you want to do it. And you can just skim. I mean, you could take forever on these verses, but I want you to look specifically from what the manual said. What do you learn from Moroni that can help you bring others closer to Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ? And maybe what are some attitudes that you see there? And then come back and I've got a quick little video for you and then we'll finish up. So I really love the website comeuntochrist.org. Uh, it's the formerly known as mormon.org. And what it's got is it's got a lot of videos that really show how the Book of Mormon, in fact, there's an entire section devoted to the Book of Mormon. And there's some videos that show how the Book of Mormon specifically has blessed people's lives. And I really believe that the Book of Mormon is written for our day. And really that message still spills over to us as well. So uh, check out this video right here. And I think you'll appreciate to see how the Book of Mormon blesses people's lives today. My name is Shaquille Walker. I'm from Savannah, Georgia. Just finished professionally running in Seattle. So I was introduced to the Book of Mormon when I was 17. And there was a family who just gave me a Book of Mormon. It was actually the mother of the family. She walked up to me the first time I met her and said, we have something for you. And she pulls out this book and she hands it to me. She goes, this is what we believe in. And I take it and I say, thank you. I was raised in a God-believing home, but I didn't know if I believed in a God necessarily for myself. And then three months after that, I remember I was working on a project for school and I started getting these feelings to go and read from the Book of Mormon which I had never done before. I started feeling this urge to pray. I remember just instinctively kneeling and speaking out loud my prayer and receiving an answer that God was real and that He cared about me and that the Book of Mormon was going to be important to my life. As I've gotten older, I've noticed my appreciation for the Book of Mormon has grown. Just the principles that I've learned have led me to be able to make better decisions than I otherwise would have been able to make. It almost seems like the Book of Mormon is going through life with me there, kind of guiding me, keeping me on track.
message. And I love where Moroni says, I speak unto you as if ye are present, and yet ye are not. And yet Jesus Christ hath shown you unto me, and I know your doing. And so here he is. He sees our day. And so I love the messages that he provides specifically for us to help us in our day. So hopefully that message helps you guys out today. Tomorrow we are finishing up the Book of Mormon in the Book of Mormon. There's a great message that I think is so applicable to our day. So anyway, you guys are great. Godspeed. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.